and we'll bring a mic around, around to you. Hearing that Coach Smart was talking about the unique environment of playing in Jacksonville, you've been through this a few times. What would you tell guys about what they're gear, gearing up for, what you're going to experience on Saturday? I'd probably say you're gearing up for bring your own juice game, Coach says. Like, obviously, when we warm up and go out there and warm up, it's just quiet. And it's just like, you don't hear anything, you take off your headset. So I put some music in and just try to get myself uh, energized and ready for the game. Because when we come out in the tunnel, it's going to be packed and loud. Harry, and, uh, just uh, as far as Trevor goes, for Trevor is going to be playing against his former team. Has he ever once mentioned what it was like over there? And how do you think he's uh, approaching this game, quietly approaching this ball game? Um, yeah, Coach, uh, Coach always tells us and like emphasizes uh, connection and on our team. So. He just says like how they, like they, they didn't have what we have over here. So he takes like a lot of like gratitude in that uh, being over here. So I, he didn't really talk about uh, the game yet. I'm sure as a week goes, we'll talk more. But I'm sure it's personal for him, just like it's personal for me, because that's where I'm from, so. Um, yeah, would you, uh Carson, after the Texas game, said, I don't know, I've, I've been a little off. I don't know what it is. I need to play better. How would you assess his play so far? And what, what, what do you think about uh, what he needs to do better? Um, I'd probably say he don't really need to do much better <clears throat> as like quarterback. He, he does all the things he needs to do as a quarterback uh, for us, like chase or like make sure we're in the right run or right protection. Um, I'm sure he's talking about things like he missed a throw like or we missed a catch or something like that on offense, taking accountability, because that's the person he is. Um, so I'll probably say nothing. We just got to play better as an offense and be all 11 of us on the same page and for that play to work. So I'll probably say that. Two things. One, you mentioned you're obviously from that area. Were you a Gator fan growing up? Uh, I really didn't have a favorite college growing up, which is crazy. Uh, but not really. I, I watched them uh, growing up, but I wasn't really a fan of them. And what was your, maybe your earliest memory uh, of this rivalry? Did you have one? Mm -hmm. Earliest memory, honestly, probably uh, by was it my sophomore or freshman year? Uh, I don't, I don't think I played in that game, but it was my first time traveling, and I remember uh, playing them. I think that was the 2021 season. 20, okay, I can't remember. But Lewis Seen coming across the middle, taking off Kyle Pitts. That's all I remember in that game. My my first time traveling it was crazy. Yeah. Very good. Always talks about you know, each game is special. Bigger than the next, but what does it mean to beat Florida? Uh, I probably say it's personal. Uh, just that borderline uh, rivalry. rivalry. Um, you already know it's going to be a physical game, so obviously it feels like a good win when we come out of there and our fans are right there cheering for us and we see the other side clearing out. So I'd probably say just, just, I don't know, like it's just one of those games where you just always want to come out as a dominant, uh, dominant win. When uh, Coach Smart was talking about you a few minutes ago, he talked about how much he felt like your experience in this offense has set you up for the success you've mm -hmm. had. How much do you think that has benefited you that you've been in this offense? You sort of know the expectations and what it takes to play in this offense. Well, I'd probably say it's just easier to like, obviously easier to play and like be in the offense and understand all the concepts where we add stuff in and install. <coughs> so it's just not a surprise when like the defense does something and Carson has a check or like the offense is Change the whole like the whole thing's just changed and going a different way. So it's easier to anticipate and pick up on things and coverages, being in the positions I play, which is all of them. So it's easier to do that. What would it mean to the senior class to never lose a game to Florida? Something that hasn't been done in decades. It would mean everything <laughs> to never lose a game. Uh, just able to like leaving here and being able to look back and talk about it. Uh, Coach tells us uh, it's a it's a it's an honor to do that. So. Just being able to do that is probably it'll mean a lot in the future. Not so much right now because we like we just want to win. Over here, what was the bye week like for you all? What did you work on, and how can you take that into this Florida game? Uh, Coach tells us it's really not a bye week; it's a work week because we still practice and do things as as if we are playing on Saturday. So, going through situational football, Monday through Friday, third down, red area, uh, second and ten, third down. I'll probably say. It's just kind of like, it's just like not missing a beat, like because a lot of teams they take advantage of the ball. You cannot do anything. Sometimes it hurt them, but coach always uh, enforces we got to get better at the small things and details. So like when we do come back that next week, it's just like we never left.
Aaron, I know it's always looking ahead for you, you guys, but for you personally, you know, going back to just the Texas game just real quick on that third and ten deep inside, you catch that first down catch. What did that do for your confidence? Um, I mean, it really didn't do much for me, uh, but obviously I caught the ball. But I'd probably say it gives the offense a lot of energy, uh, just life to move on from that another set of downs. Uh, we went down the score, I believe. Uh, just it gave left to the offense uh, because if I dropped it or like I wasn't prepared for the ball, we would have punted the ball, and who knows how the game would have went. And we've seen more of Anthony Evans in recent weeks. What has stood out to you in his uh, second season on the team? I'd probably say his growth, uh, coming in. Uh, not being able to do much on offense because he had people in front of him. In front of him, um, he's electric. As you can see, uh, uh, he plays on punt, kicks, returns. He's really good in, um, in kick return. He's really fast, and he has a lot of like changes. Like he has a special kind of change of direction where he can keep running and keep his speed. That's very special, and it's going to be great to watch in the future. Hey, how do you guys handle the emotional highs and lows of the season and try to stay off that roller coaster and focus on the task at hand? Uh, Probably say, Chris Smart always tells us, don't ride the wave of emotion. Just try to stay right here, whether it's good or bad. Like, obviously, when you do something bad, you want to just, like, you know, get mad at yourself or get down at yourself or think negative. And when you do something good, you want to do something out of character, like cause a penalty or something like that, or, like, push and shove and throw the ball or something. So I'll probably say just staying, like, level-headed the whole game. And Coach tells us all the time, composure, just keeping that. Kirby said after the Texas game that, that nobody gave you guys a chance to win that game. This is a game where people are expecting Georgia to win. How, how is it to prepare for a game like this? Uh, you know, when everyone thinks it's not going to necessarily be a tight one. I'd probably say treat it like any other game we play. Uh, it doesn't matter who we're playing. Coach always tells us to play to our standard. Don't play to a, an opponent's standard, like no matter who they are. So I'd probably say just entering this uh, this week and attacking this game like any other game because uh, we know they're going to give us their best shot. So we got to just be able to take a punch when they do. And you've grown into a, a very capable veteran player. Was there a, a turning point when you reflect back over your career? Obviously, you know you didn't play much because of the injuries, but is there a moment you can look back to and, and pinpoint uh, when you had an epiphany or just a, a big change in terms of your commitment or your level of accomplishment here? Um, I'll probably say um, uh, this past offseason, uh, me like taking accountability of the room and like being a leader and a, vo and a vocal guy that I like in the past wasn't. Um, I'd probably say just having to do things and coach and be out there and show the young guys how to do it is like a big step that I had to take and that I took advantage of. Give us a, a kind of a recap of your development at UGA. We saw Lad McConkey have a couple of big uh, plays this past mm -hmm. week. My boy Lad. I talked to him at the press conference. He's like, I got ready for this at Georgia. Can you get your take on that? Probably say Monday, Monday through Friday, Buddy Tuesday. Um, nothing ain't gonna prepare. Nothing is gonna prepare you for it uh, until you go through it. Um, people say a lot. Uh, practices here at Georgia are harder than the game. So when you get to the game, everything's easy. Uh, coach makes things so hard, makes things go so fast to the point like when you get to the game, everything slows down and you can like just like function easier than their practice. Yeah, you had a big third down catch in that win over Texas. Could you just sort of walk us through that play and from your perspective, what kind of impact that play had on the team and sort of calming them down given how blockish everything was at that point in time? Mm, obviously, just like a, like a silence for a moment. Like, they were screaming on third down, like third down, like all the stuff was going crazy. And I thought to myself, like I, I could tell how the deep, uh, the DB was playing. I think they were in quarters, so he was like opening up, letting me like, like so I wouldn't run past him. So I ran like I was running to go, and I like did a double move at the top, so I could run, went inside. And as soon as I came out the break, I see the ball and caught it and just got the first. I know you said every game counts the same, but what's the one game, the one rival that hits different for you? That just feels different. I'd probably say the, um, the Florida game, just because uh, I'm from Florida and growing up, going to camps and like it's, it's like it's like a small world in Florida. Like everybody goes to like places and like does things. Like as a, as a young guy growing up and like camps and stuff like that, you meet a lot of people that go to schools in Florida. And so I have a lot of um, I have a, I don't think I have that many teammates that play in Florida anymore because they either transferred out or they're in the league. But I had a a big a, a large amount of people who I played with in high school that went to Florida. So. Uh, I'm just excited. To, hopefully, I, th I think I got a couple more that still play for Florida. But hopefully, I can uh, be able to see them after the game and just talk, catch up with them and chop it up. Any more questions for Aaron?
All right, Aaron. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thanks, Aaron.